Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, continuing our power rankings of the best sports movies going sport by sport by sport by sport today. Football. So give the episode a like, subscribe to the podcast, and in the comment section, I want to hear your top 10 favorite football movies. Because this is a contentious one because it really spans age ranges. There's a lot of old football movies that people really seem to like. Uh, I'm not that old, so while I've seen a lot of them, not all of them, uh, they didn't really crack a lot of my list. Gary and Thorne is here, who's even younger than me to yeah. break this all down. When you went sport by sport by sport, I was thinking of, here's sport, have a trophy. Have a trophy. Here's the tort, have a trophy. Nine trophies for the tort. Which again, really shows hey, where Steve. our uh, pop culture sort of <laughs> Demographic lies. Well, you, we can. We I don't can, think at I, some point we can rank the best Homestar Runner Strong Bad email. I was just gonna say I don't think there's a lot of Homestar Runner North Dallas Forty crossover audience. Oh, that is untrue because there's one person who does love them both, who is here to really infuse this show with the old man takes it actually deserves. That man's name is Tim and August. Tim and August. That's not my name, Myrtle Beth. See, Dallas. What is it called again? Dallas? North, North Dallas, Dallas 40. 40. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Plus, we have some Sonora Card Gauge crossover. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. He said it's not his name. If, what is your name, then? I like to eat melty chocolate bars in line. <laughs> <laughs> A very hot start to the show. Let's get right into it. <laughs> <laughs> First two things uh, we need to discuss are whether these are football movies or not. Okay. The first two, Silver Linings Playbook and Jerry Maguire. Tim, are they football movies? I think it doesn't matter if you think they're football movies, Val. Gary, are they football movies? Um, I would lean to say yes for Jerry Maguire. We're at least going to have to talk about it for miscellaneous. Well, that's the thing. It so either falls into that, football or miscellaneous. Sure. I would say having knowing that we have miscellaneous, I could There's say There's a lot of movies in the miscellaneous it's category. It's going to be a great show. Um, Silver Linings Playbook is not. Is not. Um, because they do something I've always really hated where there are specific lines in that movie where De Niro gets very, very accurate about that particular Philadelphia Eagles season. So accurate that you know someone took the time to look it up and actually write those lines in. And then there are times they are just wrong <laughs> about that season and it has no bearing. So pick one or the other. And to me, that's why they're not going to make my list. Okay. Tim, for you, miscellaneous or football? I would throw them both in miscellaneous, but Jerry Maguire does have a stronger case. I agree it has a stronger case. Well, it has actual football scenes in it. Yeah, true, but it's more of a sports agency movie than a football movie. Is Wedding Crashers a football movie? Oh, of course. It's number one on the list. There you go. Crab cakes and football, Gary. It's what Marilyn does. But no, it is not okay. considered a football movie. Let's get into it right away. Do we want to talk about notable omissions, potentially? Uh, sure. There's uh, probably a couple that aren't going to make anyone's list. Uh, people really like, and okay, so here's the one that I want to start with, because I haven't seen it, but it just seems like it's the way that we talk about, like, some people talk about Caddyshack, we talk about Major League, I have my own version, I guess, of this movie, but, like, Necessary Roughness yeah. seems like a funny movie that people over the age of 40 really seem to like. I wonder if we have the same replacement for this, and I think that was I think we do. the key word. Yes. Um... Yeah, I, I have no bearing for this movie. I, I, like you, think there's a massive audience for this thing, but yeah, it, it passed me by. Because everyone who responded when I put this out here, what are the best sports movies? It actually showed up inside like people's top three. But then I looked at those people, all like in their 50s, their 40s. It seems to have no market or bearing for anyone under 40. I could be completely off on that, but you and I haven't seen it. Tim, have no. you seen it? I'm under 40. I like it. Did it make your top 10? Yeah, it did. It made number 10. Okay. Okay. So it made Tim's list. Uh, Invincible. I, I remember I saw it in theaters. It's not a bad movie by any sense, but like, just in general, when you write yourself into a corner, like our star or the star of our movie is at best a special teams player. Oh, we'll get to that later too. So the turning point of the movie is really that thing that Vince Papali learns where an offensive lineman's like knuckles look different when he's going to block you a different way. And that, that is like 
the most important information. That's the eureka moment he has. In the grand scale of football movies, not so hot. Uh, what was the Tony Danza one? The garbage picking, field goal kicking, oh, whatever wow. that one is. That yeah. didn't make my list. No, that didn't make my Probably list. Probably number either. one. Tim loves Tony Danza. No, I, that's not true. I don't know why you say that. That's not true. I was the only one who had um, Angels in the Outfield on my baseball list. Tim loves Tony Danza. He thinks he's the boss. <laughs> no, that was more. What's her name? Jessica Tandy? Who was the, the older woman on that show? Oh, yeah. She was the boss. Not She was the boss. Uh, Mona. Mona was the boss. Mona. Yeah, that's right. Did draft day make anyone's list? No. Yes. Oh. Whoa! It's so bad. You hate it's Costner. So... You had no Costner baseball movies no. on your yeah, baseball z- list. Zero Costner in baseball, one Costner in football? Really? So, oh. That isn't true. I believe I did have The Natural. Or not The Natural, sorry. I believe I had Field of Dreams on Oh, you my did. Baseball. Okay, that's true. Uh, but lower draft than us, day is a terrible movie that is in no way related to how the real NFL works. But I don't care. It is like eating cotton candy. It's addictive, even though there's nothing there. It's it's funny because it's so bad. And, like, the graphics are good. And I don't care. I just enjoy it. And I know it's terrible. And we all have these things wait, which we know wait. are bad, but we watch anyway. I can't just make an intellectual defense of the film as a film in any way other than I can't explain it, but it's fun. The oh, graphics yeah. are good. Are you talking about the giant names of the city that appear yes, on the screen. Yes, that is exactly what I am talking about. See, Gary knows this movie better than he wants to let on. I, I, I saw it once in theater. It was... Okay, no, I, didn't see it in theater. I watched it at home. It was <laughs> mind-numbing, the climax of this movie. The old-school mentality that wins out. And and not only is it... it, it is it's it it's like the their... football version of that movie, Trouble with the Curve. Yeah, it, it, it basically is, except that in Trouble with the Curve, I, I've never seen it, but I assume that was a singular event where that scout had to do something to make a decision. In this movie, not only does Kevin Costner's old-school mentality work out for him, it also, like, somehow sullies the minds of the other teams drafting inside the top five so that they make all these mistakes because they're too young or something. I like, Listen, if I, had a, if I had a football team, I'd have Dennis Leary as my head coach. I won't hear of it. And the way they were able to bamboozle the owner of the Seahawks, who was the principal from Boston Public, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm going to defend it. I know it's a bad movie, uh, it, it's, but it's fun. And you know what? Sometimes you just got to... I, I just already know it's not your 10, which means it's one of your top nine football movies of all time. Well, but, it, it is number nine. And, but but here's the thing. I'm for more of these types of movies sure. on people's lists. I like that Tim likes a bad movie and can try to defend I just it. Feel like there's I, other, I love tons of bad movies that I try to defend. There's other specifically bad football movies yeah, that, that I have like on I'd my rather list. defend. Yeah. So, uh, Blindside, did it make anyone's no. list? No. It, it did not. It did not make mine either. I think it's a highly rewatchable movie. Look, I my sister went to school for four years at Ole Miss. At Ole Miss. She loves this movie. There's like, I guess there's a certain rah-rah aspect to seeing your alma mater in film. Um, Michael Ower doesn't like the movie. <laughs> he doesn't know what he likes. The only thing he likes is Michael Jordan. I watched his interview. <laughs> There's like six people who get that reference, and two of them are on this show. Well, it was on a Sunday night football broadcast. It was an interview. Yes, I know, but do, no one remembers. Yeah, it, didn't it, really, it was didn't when really Ma- make waves. It, it was in 2009 when Michael Orr was real hot at the time. When the movie had just come out, he was playing for the Ravens. It was a Sunday night Pittsburgh versus Baltimore game. You and remember it, so much about this. We watched the interview like 20 times because it's so outrageous. Yeah. And would you say that this movie was like it? For Sandra Bullock, like, yeah, she was in Gravity, but Gravity is a very overrated movie. And, like, this was, like, the apex of her career. Which like, she I don't know about that. Actually, that's what kind of makes me dislike this movie, is that people treat it like it's this amazing Sandra Bullock performance. It's I good. feel like she's had well, much better films. Much better? Yeah. She was in Speed. Speed, <laughs> exactly. Okay, but, like, I, I don't think of Speed as a Sandra Bullock movie. She's know, great in Speed. I, real I, hot. I think this movie panders a little bit. Like, I think this is a real good white guilt movie. Well, she was also in Crash. That's true. That's, that's true. Maybe she's got a soft spot. You know what I liked her in? The Heat. That's an actu- that's actually that's actually a pretty good movie, and I don't like Melissa, Melissa McCarthy. McCarthy I, know, I thought that was I thought that was one of the fun. Spy is also very funny with Melissa McCarthy I seen Spy. and Jason Statham. What about Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close? That is one of the worst movies of all yeah. time. Tell me about it. Good book, though. 
I, apparently, I, I did, like the book. did not read the book, but the movie is atrocious. I had to. Her best school. movie is Miss Congeniality. That's actually Miss Congeniality funny. is very funny. Too, yeah, she's that's she, a good movie. She's starring in the new Ocean's Eleven remake, Ocean's Eight. Yeah. Great, because um, just, just what we need is another remake of that that series. Fantastic. She, she, have you not seen this? This has been around for like four months now. Yeah. This is not. And it actually potatoes. looks quite funny. Yeah. Well, it can't be. It can't be any less funny than the the remake of Ocean's Eleven the first time. So for someone who uh, claims to be as woke as you are, you better get on hot feminist issues like the Ocean's Eight remake. And also, who, who doesn't like the remake of Ocean's Eleven? Ocean's uh, Eleven uh, rules. No. Also, yeah, I wa- I've watched also, that concept uh, over and over uh, and over. Ocean's again. Twelve also very good. No, the original is great. Like the one of them was really bad. Was it thirteen or twelve? Thirteen. They're bad. all okay. bad. I won't hear of this. Yeah. I like the sixties version with people who I can't do. act in it. Same as like when we talk about the longest yard. Like the old one is better. I would agree yeah, with that. I would agree with that. I, although I don't dislike the new one either. The new one is hot garbage. Come on. The new one is fine. Yeah, it is what it it's is. It's exactly what it's, it's from the Adam Sandler. Movie. Yeah, it's not like the old one is some prestigious no. movie. It's some shitty Burt Reynolds movie. Well, exactly. what's wrong with Burt Reynolds? I would, no, but I would say... Burt Reynolds has me, a big, uh, a, a long career of just appearing in shitty movies. Yeah, if you told me that Burt Reynolds was starring in a football movie in the 70s, that's the exact movie I would assume it was, and therefore I'm happy because it delivers everything I need. Same if you told me in 2005, Adam Sandler is now starring in a remake of that movie. What do you think that's going to be like? Uh, I don't know, does Nelly play a running back? Yeah, he does. Is Michael Irvin in the movie? Yes. <laughs> big win. Uh, oh, The Net with Sandra Bullock futuristic movie yeah but we're getting there soon do do love internet movies from the 90s from 1995 very accurate it's like swordfish she's also in a time to kill which is not a bad movie yeah Sword. that is a very good movie sword that is swordfish best um, known for halle berry's breasts it, that is and true hugh jackman as a non-marvel acting performance that is true which you don't see much it's usually usually marvel or singing when it comes to hugh that jackman was he was in les mis <laughs> and he was in that one from this year too yeah the greatest showman not the greatest Which, showman. And yet made a hundred billion quadrillion dollars somehow. It's insane to me, even just in concept, someone was like, hey, let's make P.T. Barnum a good guy. And but no one like, stopped the production of that film. Why I, should they have? It made more money than God. Somehow, the, everybody yeah. went to see it. And the soundtrack, I think actually beat Oh Brother Where Art Thou in Titanic is like the best-selling soundtrack or most streamed Jeez, now, I guess, crazy. the way you would have to go. Yeah, like, we must be I, taking is, that movie, is that movie based off the Freak book? <laughs> Mondo Freaks? Mondo Freaks? I don't think so. <laughs> let's get back to football. Um, so, draft day. We talked about that. Um, let's see. Let's pull all the right moves with Tom Cruise. Yeah, respect, he, respect to Tom, but didn't make the list. He's past interference man in that movie. Though. Chris Penn is in that movie. No. I'm a big fan of Chris Penn. Did not crack my top ten, though. Tim, you? No. Tim, did you have concussion? Tell the <laughs> truth. No, I mean, that has the most iconic clip of any of these movies. It's, it's a horrible movie, but I'm only here to tell the truth. Tell the <laughs> truth. That accent is so mind-bogglingly it's so bad. so bad. And it's also not consistent throughout the movie. No. Nope. It comes and it goes. Sort of like concussion sy- symptoms. Yeah, some, some days are bad, some days are worse. <laughs> you think, it, I think we talked about this on a different show, but the fact that the movie was so bad that the NFL was like, <laughs> yeah, talk about it, we don't care. <laughs> Crisis averted. People will just watch this and be like, oh, God, give them more concussions. <laughs> Radio, not on the list. No. Radio's a bad movie, like a really bad movie. Yeah. And people think of it like, oh, like it... It's a nice, sentimental story. It's just a bad movie. Well, there was a pocket it almost... from, like, 2000 to 2010 where we just got crammed with these Disney-inspiring sports movies. And at some point, you just run out of the good, inspiring stories to tell. Um, what was worse for Cuba Gooding's career? Radio or Snow Dogs? Which is potentially a sports movie. Probably Snow Dogs. Actually, that might have to fall into miscellaneous. <laughs> Uh, what else do we have here? It should have been in racing movies. Uh, Gridiron Gang with The Rock. He was still kind of a normal size back then, too. Yeah, he wasn't completely inflated. Yeah. It was his point between wrestling and now yeah. in the acting career where he shrunk a little bit. Not a terrible movie, though. It's it's fine. It, it is exactly what it is. Um, neither of the Longest Yards made my list. I have the well, original. The original, you have the original? Me, yeah. Okay, so we'll talk about that. The Express. See, this, this again sort of falls into that. That came either directly before or directly after the Jackie Robinson movie. 
and it just again you reach a point of diminishing returns it's it's weird to say that these people's inspiring life stories and the tragedies they had to overcome lose steam but it's it's just a story i think we'd heard before and i, and I don't remember it getting a lot of like it kind of just came and went i don't think it had a lot of lasting power was costner also in that i saw it right when it came out and have no memory of the movie whatsoever that's the Dennis, that's dennis quaid Oh, yeah, it was Dennis Quaid. Okay. All right, what about Breaking Away, Tim? Did that make your list? No. Nope. See, I've never seen it. That was another popular one amongst older people. Yeah. That people really seem to like. When 1979, it came out. Also, I, Dennis Quaid. And Daniel Stern. Which, you know, really? People, Jackie Earl Haley. Daniel Stern, wow. The young Daniel Stern? I guess. Getting it going. So is that all the ones that kind of missed the list? That I mean, at least I know some will appear on other yeah, people's lists. Yeah, those right. seem like the big ones. Let's get into number 10, because Gary and you and I have the same number yeah, 10. Yeah, we do. Little Giants! Oh, okay, well, I have that too. Not oh. 10, but I have it higher on my list. Oh, where does it appear really? on your list? Seven. I like okay. that movie. Well, I like, it's, a, it's a solid movie. I think it just hits us all at, like, the wheelhouse yeah. time, being kids, watching kids' movie, the icebox. Even though I think... Uh, very ahead of, I like... Think Roger Sherman broke this down, but... The annexation of Puerto Rico turns out to be not the play that he says he's drawn up to John Madden. It's actually just the fumble ruski. I what just if, love whatever when they, works. I love when they gain a yard for the first time. They gain a yard, <laughs> and like uh, Ed O'Neill's like, it's just a yard. It doesn't mean anything, and it's clearly like the biggest thing in the world to them. That to me is just really neat. I'm a big fan of Ed O'Neill. Kendrick Moranis. Is this like this is one of his yeah. last movies? Is it not? Until he's, now, he's going to be involved in this SCTV reboot or whatever it is. Which is fine. So yeah. you had Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Little Giants, Spaceballs. Hey, Hot Hands, you're the best player on our team. It's a great, it's a great film. See yeah, Ed, Ed O'Neill is good in just about everything he does. I agree. The single greatest Ed O'Neill performance is in Wayne's World. When he bogarts the camera. <laughs> yes, it is. What, why, why is it when you kill a man in the heat of passion? It's called murder. Kill him in war. You're a hero. Okay! <laughs> Camera back on us! <laughs> just, it's just a great part. So yeah, I'm in on Ed, I'm in, in on Ed O'Neill. It makes that Modern Family show watchable for me that yep. he's on it. He's the best part of it. Well, his little... part and Chris Farley's part are the two best parts of Wayne's World. Well, I don't know. Wayne's World's a pretty solid movie. Yeah, I mean, there's the... Chris... The Farley part is not as good of a cameo as... And Chris Farley ruins his cameo in Wayne's World 1 by just being a different character in Wayne's World 2. Yeah. <laughs> Who's a much bigger part of the movie. Yeah. Um, so, Little Giants. Yeah, it's it's just a perfectly acceptable children's movie. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Just like how the big green might appear on someone's miscellaneous. Yeah. List. Oh, it will. Because we're not doing soccer-specific lists. Yeah. Because this isn't Britain, so no one really cares. That's Steve Gutenberg, right? The Goot? I think it is Steve Gutenberg. I think he's the he's the teacher slash coach. In Big Green? Yeah. The last thing I remember Steve Gutenberg from was that episode of Party Dan where he hired them to cater his party. Which well, is that would have been more recent. Which is a the great, great episode. It is a great episode. And a great series. So what was 10 on your list, Tim? And it wasn't draft day? No, number 10 on my list was Necessary, necessary Roughness. Necessary Roughness. Oh, okay. So you find it a laugh riot, Tim? Hey, it's funny. You know, it, it hits all the right spots. It's it's sort of in the classic mode of, of a sports movie. And the problem with football is that it doesn't actually lend itself to great movies. It, it can be fun, but it's hard to like make a gripping drama about it. So you know, they're having some fun with it. And I, I think it's a perfectly good flick. Well, and of all the ones that we've talked about so far, baseball seems to produce the highest end movies. Football's very close, though. Yeah. Like, we even talked about like when we did the boxing show, you have Raging Bull, you have Rocky, and then every movie's almost exactly like those two movies. At least within football, there's enough story, there's enough people and enough characters. Well, yeah. You can tell different types there's of stories. There's only so many outcomes in a boxing match. You're kind of kind of just stuck with one of three or four outcomes. That's... And Rocky set the template, and everyone yeah. just followed that. And we just did basketball movies, and they're all exactly the same. Yep. Um, what was your number one in basketball? Mine was White Men Can't Jump. Mine was Hoosiers. And Al's was Blue Chips. Blue Chips, yeah. See, my favorite is the fish of St. Pittsburgh. We, we, did, we talked about this. Not one of the three of us had seen it, so we made a note of that, that it's going to be very high on people's list. And we said that it would probably be your number one movie, whether you had seen it or not. It is my. I have seen it, and it is my number one movie. That's a great I, I find it doubtful. It's better than He Got Game. Just, it's better than Hoosiers, and Hoosiers would be second for me. 
Okay. So Little Giants, Little Giants, and what was Tim's? Necessary, Necessary roughness. roughness. Number nine. You and I both have the yeah, same number very nine. very strange transition between these two films. And I guarantee you it's much higher on Tim's list. Yes. Brian's song, number nine. Where does it fall on your list, Tim? It falls at six. Oh, I thought it'd be higher. It's emotional. Yeah, six. Yeah. I don't know how great of a movie it is. Is it a TV movie? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. So it shouldn't even be on the list. I often sometimes get it confused with Life of Brian, which I think is very funny. See, I agree. I have who a giant... gets that? That is a fantastic movie. That's better than any of <laughs> uh, Who likes the movie the most? Who has a poster of it in their condo? And I'm okay. a married man. That wins. I'm not even okay. in some dorm room. Okay, so you're a part of the Judean People's Front. I'm a member of the Popular Front of Judea. What about the People's Judean Front? Yeah, he's over there. He's over there. <laughs> but no, Bri- Brian Song don't does say, have Lando Cal- Calrissian. So stop saying Jehovah. You're only going to make it worse. Tim's off on a rant yeah, by he's, himself he's here. He's going now. Oh, Billy D. I have Billy D. Williams. Yep. Not a big span of life for Billy D. He's got for he's an got, iconic for playing an iconic character. Did have a big. He's got life Dale Sayers, and he's got Lando. That's And he's in the Kentucky Fried Chicken commercials yes. in Naked Gun. He is. I want to say. Yeah. Or yeah. he's in Naked Gun. I forget now. Is Naked know. Gun a baseball movie? Wow. No. Probably not, but... I mean, it's there's an argument to be made. All right. Anyway, Brian Song. Tim, tell us all about Brian Song, since you like it more than we do. Well, I mean, first, it's filled with fantastic actors. Secondly, it spawned a sort of a remake, which is actually also good. Uh, The 2001 movie is actually pretty good, too, even though it's not as good as the original. I mean, it's just, it's it's a meaningful story. I mean, Gail Sayers is somebody, if you like football, but you're under the age of 35, you probably don't know who Gail Sayers is, or you don't understand how important he was or how excellent he was to the sport. And so I think it teaches a valuable lesson about football. And it's just a really interesting story and well acted. And I like it. Two other movies that didn't probably make lists. We Are Marshall. No, it did not make lists. It was was really fringy for mine. It was... I like We Are Marshall. It's fine. It just... it. It's a very small precipice between emotionally uplifting and cornball. And it gets a little cornball-y. McConaughey really hams it up in that movie. But, no, it's it's a perfectly fine film. Leatherheads is another one. With Clooney, yeah. Clune-tang. Uh, Krasinski's in that, too. Rare miss from George Clooney as a director. It's no Syriana. He did not direct Syriana. Okay, I took a stab. He was a, he was Wait, a big... what, what movie did George Clooney make reason was terrible? He made The Ides of March, which you really hate. That movie is so <laughs> terrible. Oh my goodness! It is the most predictable, bland uh, drama. Like it's just, it's cynical in a way that like isn't even insightful. It's just a terrible movie. I would agree. It's not great. I'm. I mean, I love Good Night and Good Luck, but I really like Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Oh well, mind. yeah, that movie is. Uh, we won't get into the various political messages it's sending, but anyway, <laughs> they don't agree with me, so I'm triggered and hate it. <laughs> I, but I will say, I think the David Stratham character is absolutely knocks it out of the park as Edward R. Murrow. All right. Right. So, Brian Song, Brian Song, and Draft Day at number nine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Number, number eight on my list is Friday Night Lights, the movie, because the TV show is ineligible. Yes. I uh, have it higher. The TV show is I also, better. I also have it higher. I, I think in power rankings of Friday Night Lights, TV show, book, film. Film is number three. Yeah, but they're all good. They're all really good. There's also a, Friday night, a new Friday Night Lights Cartoon. movie coming out. No movie. Is it I, animated? I would put the film ahead of all it's those not. things. What's that? Put the film ahead of all those things. I think it's an excellent movie, and I think it's a mediocre television show that people have lionized. Oh. But I mean, season two is not great, but as soon as Michael B. Jordan shows up, it gets better again. I don't know. I, okay. I, I I'm with I'm with Tim in the sense that I really really enjoy the movie. Obviously, I have it higher. Um, where do you have it? I have it at number three. And Tim, where do you have it? Oh, goodness, I have it at five. Um. But I think it's interesting because like, actually going back and there's a 30 for 30 on their opponent okay. in the state championship. And now some of these kids would go on to uh, grand larceny after that game in the course of the summer. But they really paint that team as like this unbeatable bunch of like just very generic 
African-American stereotypes for like the mid 80s. But that school was actually like what they were going through at the time. They were like overcoming this weird um, grade, something to do with like uh, miscalculating grades scandal or something like that. So these these kids didn't even know if they were going to play the games like until the day of. <laughs> I just remember watching it 30 for 30 and then re-watching Friday Night Lights. And it makes you feel real differently about the actual culm- culminating event at the end of the film. But no, Billy Bob's great. Uh, booby. Gotta love Booby. It's a good film. Yeah, I liked it. And you liked it way more than the right. Number three on your list. That's, that's lofty. Just a solid film. My office mate once met uh, Billy Bob Thornton while, play, while bowling in Calgary. And the only question he asked him was about Booby in the movie. <laughs> what did he ask him? He asked him about the, the final play and how he used him. And then Billy Bob was very disappointed. And was Billy Bob like, I don't fucking know. Ask me about my music. <laughs> yeah. He only <laughs> wants to talk about his music. All right. So number eight on your list, Tim. Number eight on my list is, and this is perhaps it's lower than you think, I have Rudy at number eight. Rudy, wow. did, Rudy didn't make my list. I have, okay, I have Rudy much it's higher. A, it's on just my a list. movie full of lies. It is. it is. It is, but it's a, it's a great tale. It's horrible. Horrible. It is. Imagine the, propping up a shitty school like Notre Dame like that and thinking, it's, oh, it's all high and mighty. Rudy's, Rudy's a fucking terrible football player. For one thing, yes. they lied about what happened. Yeah, they lied about what happened in real life. Never happened. And I don't like Sean Austin. Don't like him. The final play. You don't like lives Sean the Austin. Dream. Best part of that movie? Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. <laughs> yeah. He lives the all-American But even he dream. loves Rudy by the end of it. See, gets- G- Garyan brought up what should have been the Rudy movie. Garyan hit us. Oh, when he gets indicted for tax embezzlement later on. <laughs> yeah, I... I- Whose side are you supposed to be on? I have it at two. So I'm on the oh, side okay. that Rudy's a great movie. But again, look, this is the thing with Rudy. I think Rudy, Rudy is Rudy inspired those... losers for ages to go try out and get embarrassed. Sure. Maybe that's We had thing. a few of those people at football tryouts in high school. Rudy, they were not. Fair enough. But Rudy as a sports movie and Rudy as the entity of all sports movies is really... Either you like it or you hate it. It's, Rudy sucks. And, and that's fine to feel that way. It's corny as shit. But I don't know. Sure. It, but it I've watched it like the, 27 times and I cry every time. Yeah, Love it tells the all-American story of what every young person in, 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 in wants to be, which is a player at the University of Notre Dame. Like, it is football. You it's cannot... Far. It, 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 it could have just it, said about, like, embracing their dreams. or but It no, is. It is about embracing their dreams. And, I mean, where else is... There's no loftier goal than to be at the University of College Football, the place where they invented the forward pass. Like probably Ohio State or USC. Ohio State isn't worthy to carry Michigan, uh, you Michigan know, the Williams. sandals of Notre Dame. Yeah, I mean, and this anywhere is, in Florida. Yeah, well, it's, it's like nice, Miami. It's nice there. Yeah, yeah. sure, but they have about six minutes of history. When we're talking about uh, the only institution which is synonymous with football. This is another uh, reason why I hate this fucking movie well, so much. Is because crackheads like him yeah, I start think, pontificating I think about Tim it. Like Notre this Dame a bad sucks. Name. Tim gives this movie a bad name. If this was about fictional Catholic college, I think everyone would like it a whole lot more. But people are out, just hate Notre Dame, which is fair because people like Tim make you want to hate Exist. Notre Dame. People like Tim make people hate Notre Dame. I'm a very quiet Notre Dame fan. If we could all just be quiet, it'd be fine. No. You know how many championships Notre Dame won in the 1800s, Gary? Well, They're the greatest school ever. He's a Notre Dame slash Habs fan. That's that's an argument he gets to lean on very heavily. History. Sorry, some of us appreciate greatness. Not recent greatness. No. Not in your lifetime greatness. You were in the national championship game a couple of years ago. How'd that work out? Mm. Whatever. Manti, Manti Teo was trying to hug on his invisible girlfriend. Or he just missed a whole bunch of tackles. One of the two. Yeah, all right. There was some bad rep. You know what? I don't want to even go back down that road. They lost by 35 points. Yeah, there was a couple of bad calls. The refs screwed us in that game, Gary. Eifert caught on the first drive a really important first down that they took back from us that really changed the tempo of the game. Anyway, I'm just saying things would have been different if the referees hadn't uh, missed a couple of calls for the Crimson. Big things Notre Dame can hang its hat on. History, the refs screwing them, and white people. A lot of great white people came through Notre Dame. That's why Tim likes it so much, right? No, absolutely when you not. Say the, when you say the all-American dream of playing for Notre Dame, that's a white person's dream from no, like 50 even, years ago. Jerome Bettis, Tim Brown. Uh, Notre Dame is and has long been a university that embraces people solely based on merit. You know, who is the best? It's an, it's an American dream no matter who you are. When you want to play football, uh, you want to play at Notre Dame. I mean, that, that's what you it don't. is. That's, you, you don't want to do that. 
that is what football is. It's certainly what college football is. It's well, not, in, it's, in 1975, growing no, still up is. in Indiana, that's where you wanted to play. It still attracts some of the best players. We're ranked high every year for a reason. We get good college recruits because, uh, you know, it's not because Indiana is a fire, Missouri is a hotbed of football talent. It says if you want to embrace greatness, uh, there's no place on earth that is great. You know why Notre Dame plays outside? So God can watch his team play football every Saturday. This sort of shit is what I'm talking about. See, Shaughnessy's a Notre Dame fan too, and he's just embarrassed by this. He should be embarrassed by this. Thank you. Yeah, of course you should be. This, I'm a, I'm this sort of talk is so Tim. ludicrous, and this is why people hate Notre Dame. Because yeah. of Tim. I, that's, why I, that's why I'm not like, I don't actively out loud cheer for Notre Dame. It's why I actively root against Rudy in this movie. Because <laughs> you want him to stay away? Yeah, I just wouldn't want him to lose. Wouldn't you want a player like Rudy, though, to make Notre Dame worse? Yeah, well, I mean, that's not really showing how great the team was, but I think the movie should end with him trying to get a sack and him getting fucking pancaked. I think we should point out before we move on that the American sitcom classic, My Name is Earl, did an entire Rudy parody where they brought back Coach Dan Devine, Rudy, and somebody else. But the whole episode is a Rudy parody. Good for them. So, Friday Night Lights, Rudy for Tim. What's your number eight? My number eight is uh, the original Longest Yard. Okay. It's, I mean, it's just, it's funny. It's, it's a, it, and like I said it's before, fine, it's, fine. It's, 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 it's a you... Burt Reynolds movie from the 1970s. It is exactly what you expect it to be. And it's funny. And, and again, I like the remake too. It's, they're two entirely different movies. I think they're both enjoyable. Yeah, they're both perfectly fine. Tim, where did you have the longest year? Third. Third? Wow, that's very high. We'll get to it I then, love it. I guess. Hey, we'll get to it then. Number seven. I have the water boy. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> water... I a little giant. Oh, yeah, okay. Waterboy is great. It's hilarious. It, it's the end of it's, Peak Sandler, too. Yeah, and it's also uh, a last hurrah for Henry, Henry Winkler. Yeah, but now he's back in Barry. That's true, he is. Um, and he was on Arrested, Arrested Development. Development. Arrested oh, Development, too. Yeah, I guess that's true. Where, where, where's Waterboy? 2000, 2001? 1999, I want to say? Okay, but 2001, he's already on Arrested Development at that point. Let's see, Waterboy, 1998. 1998. Yeah. Big show cameo. Right off the top. You know, a husband and wife cannot be convicted of the same crime. <laughs> professor, professor Insano? Is that his name? Uh, Captain Insano. Captain Insano? What would Captain Insano do? <laughs> so you got Big Show. You got, you got LT telling kids, bring him by second point. Don't smoke crack. crack. <laughs> well, Mr. Coach Klein, if I had to guess what part of the snake that would be, I would assume it is his knee. <laughs> also, it has Tim's flame, his favorite, favorite lady in film, Kathy Bates. She's very Kathy good at this movie. Fantastic. Yeah, Tim, very attracted to Kathy Bates. Number one on his list. I said Rosario Dawson's in my top five. Kathy Bates, number one on his list. I don't think that's true. I think it is. I think that's what you've said over the course of these shows now. I have not. I have a great respect for Kathy Bates. So. It also She's has, great... I, I don't know, I'll never know this actor's name, but he also played Sean's dad on Boy Meets World, but he's just the real Cajun coach. Oh, I yeah. understand. <laughs> <laughs> farmer farmer fred which is uh i'm with the offense you're with the defense special teams run laps with farmer fred shit <laughs> so yeah water boy great flick did yeah. it make your list tim no it yeah. didn't i understand why you put it there but you're, you're i just I, fake I, news then i just didn't have it fake news rudy on your list no water boy give your head oh, a shake it. If you think Rudy is Pollyanna, we have we haven't even got there yet. Oh no, wait, we're not even going to give you time to talk about that. Uh, number seven on your list it was Little Giants. Little Giants, Little Giants yeah. okay. Number six on your list then. That was Brian's song. Brian's song. Okay. You? Uh, mine is Varsity Blues. Oh, I have Varsity Blues at number five. So where is it on your list? Varsity Blues. Yeah. You didn't make it. Oh, oh my God. Oh, what a John Voight performance. T talk about like the peak of not being you know what? cool, you know not what? liking Varsity Blues. You know what Blues. Tim doesn't want? What? He doesn't want your <laughs> laugh. You know what Tim really doesn't want? Unless it's from Kathy Bates, the, whip, <laughs> the whipped cream <laughs> bikini. <laughs> what? <laughs> this movie has everything. <laughs> it has a legit soundtrack, by the yes, way. Yes, it does. It has James Van Der Beek, Canadian... Oh. Starring in a football Texas movie. Paul Walker. Pa pa Scott Kahn? Yeah, very good Scott Kahn. Yeah. A very concussed Scott Kahn on a lot of drugs? Uh, Bill and Bob? Yeah, I don't think Bill and Bob is still alive. No, he's, he's not. He, he lost a bunch of weight. He had, he had the weight loss. Gastric, gastric band bypass surgery. surgery. Um, and then he died. No. Oh. Shout out to Billy Bob. Pour one out. Yeah. I love this movie. It's 
it's a good, and it's... Ah, good, good is pushing it. It's good. And it's strangely, it, it has emotional resonance at certain points. Well, I mean, the best part is, like, around this, like, this When was, they go to the strip club and they use Hot for Teacher? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of generic stuff that happens in this movie. I'm all for it. Top two scenes in movie history where Van Halen has amplified the scene. That's up there. And Panama and Panama Superbad. Panama Superbad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, when we think about all the movies from this time, not only is it the best football movie, really, from this time, it's one of the best teen movies from this time when all we got were teen movies. Yes, that's true. Well, I mean, basically, is Paul Walker in not another teen movie or there's just a Paul Walker type in not another teen I movie? I think there's Billy Bob's actually in, in the movie. Teen yeah, movie, Paul Walker's right. not in it. Yeah. But like from the actual teen movies of this but time. Chris Evans is in it. Really? Chris Evans is the lead character in not another teen movie. Huh, good for him. The only other like teen movie I can really remember from this time that I like just as much. Can't hardly wait. It was Can't Hardly Wait. Yeah. Quality Seth Green in that movie. A lot, lot of people in that movie, and featuring one of the better lines of, she gets the letter Jennifer Love Hewitt gets in her like drunk asshole boyfriend at the time. Just like, sorry, a man, duh. <laughs> Which is, I still use to this day. It's just a very quality insult, very quality line. And then she says, who's gonna love you now? And she holds up the letter and she says, somebody. He goes, somebody? More like, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> It just, it, 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 yeah, of course. <laughs> Dr our buddy Drunk Deb, when he gets all drunked up, like it's cl someone got drunk and wrote the insults because they are classic <laughs> drunk person insults yep. coming back at you. Oh, it's so good. Oh. Anyway, Varsity Blues. I can't believe it's not on your list. That's an I outrage. can very much believe it. No, that, that is an outrage. Tim was never a teenager. Therefore, <laughs> he couldn't relate to these types of themes. Ha 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 ha. He's not going to dispute that. No, he's not. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that was number six. What was your six? six? My six was The Program. Oh, okay. Which is an overrated movie. I just happened to find it very enjoyable. That's fair. I think it's... I think if you polled 90% of people, it would be somewhere in their top ten. Omar Epps is in that movie, too, isn't he? He is. So he's in every sports movie. So him and Ned Beatty <laughs> are just in every <laughs> sports movie. Secretly in every sports movie. Yeah. And the steroid guy, I forget what his name is now, because it's completely eluding me, was exactly like the three steroids people I knew in college who played on the football team. Right. Like, to a, what is Tim doing? Tim's having a beat here to Kathy Bates. I, I feel like he's No, I was trying to close the door to keep the leaf blower noise outside from slash, coming through. Slash, you were outside having a cig. No, no, I don't do that on the podcast. I don't like keep getting accused of these things. He's down to six cigs a day. That's Less than, they're fewer than that, actually. That's fake news. <laughs> <laughs> just, just no, uh, untrue. So the program didn't appear on your list. Uh, no, doesn't no. Mean. Tim, your list? No, no. Really? Yes, really. I'm not making that up. That that's shocking to me. Well, Tim's got to have North Dallas Forty, Newt Rockne All American, <laughs> and um, I know Brian Song already has. All right. So what was your number six, Tim? Number six was Brian's song, and okay. number five was Friday Night Lights. Okay, so I have Fur City Blues at number five. What was your five? I have The Replacements. Number five. I have The Replacements at number two. I thought about having it higher. I love The Replacements. It's a great flick. It's a great rewatchable miles movie. Miles and miles of heart. We, we got some Keanu. Yep. That girl who I've never seen again, who I but thought was super really hot when I was like... hot. Yeah, like when I was 16, I was like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Whatever happened to her? I'm going to look know. her up right now. Tim, where did The Replacements fall for you? It, it just didn't. Oh, wow, my God. Man. There's just some really, really good movies that I like more than that. I guess. Wow. Hackman? Yeah, well, it's nothing wrong with that movie. I think it's perfectly rewatchable. It's just like, I only have 10 spots, so. Mad TV alum and Office Space cameo person, Orlando Jones in the movie. Also star of Double Take with Eddie Griffin. And what was that one? I with, think that's uh... that movie's name. Evolution with David Duchovny. Oh, that was an Ivan Reitman movie. Yeah. Let's see if we can get the full cast here. Brooke Langton is her name. Who's the Who's the British kicker? Oh, Reese Reese Ivans. Right. Yeah. He's good. He has Sigs on the Fantastic, field. Fantastic. Yep. John Favreau is the lunatic. Oh yeah. yeah. Shaved head John Favreau. Uh, it's funny. It's a funny movie. It's a good movie. Yeah. And like you said, it is it is our generation's necessary roughness. I would think. And Tim does, do you know why Tim doesn't like it? Because it, it glorifies scabs. Oh, People terrible. who cross the picket line to play. Is that your oh, real? Yes. Oh, oh, yes. I, I've been long known as a big advocate of big labor. Yeah. Uh, no, I got nothing wrong with the movie. I just don't like it better than others. So which disgraced 
college quarterback do you think is better? Keanu's in the replacements or Keanu's in point break? Well, I mean, they're both good. That's true. And that's the one part of point break that never makes sense to me. Is, is it why they don't know who he is? Yeah, how do they not know? I know. They're in California. His name is Johnny Utah. It's, yeah, it's a very it's, it's like a name you remember. Even if he wasn't good, you would remember. Like, oh, who was that guy that I always said that got all the NBA? No, I forget his name. Travis Outlaw. Oh, yeah. The only reason he ever got NBA contracts is because his name was Travis Outlaw. So bad. people remembered it when it came around. That's a cool name. It's a very cool name. So what, what did that actress do? What's her name? Uh, What's her name was? is Brooke Langdon. That doesn't even ring a bell. And she was in, she was in Swingers? Oh, yeah, she was one of the trailer girls in Swingers, I think. Okay. She was in the Bench Warmers, which we did not bring up under the baseball movies. No. Nope. Canine Adventures, Legend of the Lost Gold. Okay, so it's it's going uphill. Yeah, she she <laughs> she, she, re, she really peaked in the replacements. That okay. that was really it for her. Also, John Madden cameo in this movie. How could it be bad? It's very Boom. Good, very good point. So I don't know. I'm big on the replacements. That's also, me. I've long said I like how they went with the Dwight Clark route which movies don't often do, of giving the tight end the game-winning play. I don't think running like an out route 45 yards down the field, generally a good move to call for your tight end, but he was fundamentally their best player. Just happened to be deaf. Which is fine, because he'll never go offside. <laughs> it's true. All right, so that's my number two. It was your number five? Five, yeah. All right, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is Any Given Sunday. Any Given Sunday? We'll get to any given Sunday on my list. Where is yeah, it's point? higher. It's higher for it's, me. It's higher on my list as well. What's your number four, Tim? Yeah, it's Newt Rock, the All American. Wow, I thought that. Was I assumed. I assumed it would one. be number one. No, it, it, honest, one and two for me are, are cut above all these. I if, mean, this is if a great Donald movie. Trump started it instead of Ronald Reagan, would it be number one for you? Of course. Well, just, no, Pre President Reagan in the movie is, is, of course, gives the iconic windman for the Gipper. Let you me know, tell you. Yeah. Tell Here's what you do. Don't only win one for the giver, win it for me. <laughs> that is a terrible Ronald Reagan impression, let me say. You know, Ronald Reagan sounded more like this, and uh, he had more of a sort of a West Coast accent, but the West Coast from the 1930s. It sounds like you're they from say, Ireland. Well, they used to say, well, he was Irish too, and they used to say, Washington instead of it's Washington. getting farther and farther and Irish. That, it is keeps how, going. that is how people sounded when they were from California, and Los Angeles in the 1930s. That is how they pronounced it. You could tell the difference. Anyway, it, the, the did movie... Just, did he really think I was doing a Ronald Reagan impression? I think That I, was, if not spot on, pretty close to he, spot on. he thought that that's what you were doing. Oh, wow. Yeah. I guess I should, But it produced I, his Ronald I, I, Reagan, I, I, so... I guess I should have thrown in, win one for the Gipper. It's fake news. There you go. Win it for me. Hashtag winning. That, that, see, that was the impression that I was going for, but I'm not going to... doing a Charlie team. Sheen impression? Yes. Anyway, it's got the iconic. No, we, 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 no, no one cares about this fucking movie. We're moving it's, on. It's a classic. No, it's not. And it's not a classic. Story about Rockney, who was one of the most important innovators in the sports history, mm -hmm. yeah, who died great. very young yeah, and tragic. That's great. Yeah, no one, no one cares. Number four for me, big fan, which I am a big fan of. Yeah. Now, it's not necessarily a football movie. It's a football fandom movie. I still think it works. I like it's the owning Mahoney of football movies. Yeah, again, I've never seen it, but I know it was critically adored. Uh, everyone it's, who I've known who has watched it loves it. It's kind of like if Tim was, turn him up to like, he's a Giants fan. If Tim is like level seven sadness overall in his day to day life, 10. this guy's a 10. Yeah. So just take Tim and crank his sadness up to a 10. He's Pat now, Oswalt and Big Do fan. you think this movie would have differed at all had message boards been more prevalent at the time it was made? Well, potentially, because all he does is call into sports talk radio and feud with Michael nights. Rappaport from Philadelphia. I, I used to do that. Yeah, we knew that. <laughs> no, no one's surprised by that. You call into this show like three times a week. Yeah, you're, even when you're, no you're, one not, there. you're not even a guest. You just show up. I'm like I, Homer, I just showed up the day the plan opened. So where did, did, did no one else have big fans? No, I didn't. But I haven't no, seen it. That was I the only reason it didn't come on my list. But again, I've, I've heard great things. Yeah, it's terrific. It's terrific. Ter I recommend, I don't even try to spoil it for people. Just go watch the movie. And the end is the best. Because it's something I can hear Tim saying. Is all I'll tell you. Okay. It would be Tim's response to the situation that he gets himself in at the very end. Uh, your number four. Uh, any given Sunday. Like okay, said, but we'll get to that in a second. And what, Tim? What was your number four? Number four was Newt Rockney. And number three for you? The Longest Yard. Cat. 
I've got Friday Night Lights at three. I got to remember the about. Titans at number three. I have that at number one. I have that at number two. Okay, so I guess we'll get to that. Well, I mean, we're at the point now where there's going to be a lot of crossover. Oh, we'll see. Well, I, I got to assume that North Dallas 40 is next on Tim's list. Nope, not on the list at all. Really? There's a lot of people over the age of 40 who would be very upset. You know what? They'll be as triggered as Tim gets over this stuff. I, I don't get triggered about just about anything, if anything at all. I'm not that type of person. I'm actually a pretty even-keeled, calm person who doesn't get overworked up about meaningless stuff. People were triggered on the initial list because no one because the the way that it worked when I built all these lists because I wanted to get input from everyone like, hey, what are your three favorite movies, like sports movies? And like no one had said North Dallas 40. And then I released like, hey, here's what people voted for. And then like, where's North Dallas 40? It's yeah. like, well, you didn't vote for it, so why would it be on the fucking list? And then people got all uppity about it, so I put it on the list, and I didn't make any of it. I've never seen it. I don't yeah. really care. But people seem to have a certain attachment it to this movie. Feels like a real old-timey football movie. Yeah, Tim, tell us about it. Give me the. Give me why people like it. Do people play through injury? I only saw it once, and I wasn't like. In, I only saw it once, and I was like, oh, whatever. Like it didn't have any lasting impact with me. So I bet someone plays through an injury in there. Like, I, I, I'm not going to defend it for the sake of defending it. I didn't put it on the list. I. I Maybe I'll have to go back and watch it and come back and give my review of it. Maybe. But people are very uppity about it. And it was all, like, preening internet people, too, that are a bit older. So what do we have left, though? We've got Any Given Sunday, we've got Remember the Titans, and whatever Tim's number one movie is. Yeah. Tim, what is your number one movie? Any Given Sunday. Oh, okay. quite a bit, too. So we're fine. Yeah, I have Any Given Sunday as my number one, too. Cool. But I'm saying, that's, those are the only two we really have to talk about, is Remember the Titans and Any Given Sunday. Okay. So we'll talk about Remember the Titans. Is that really bad you can say about no. movie? No, really, not at all. Really solid movie. Is it the best live action Disney movie? Ooh. Um question. What are some I'm trying to think of some other options yeah. first? Oh, Google so. I mean, they're mostly sports movies, right? Yeah. I would I would think so. I type in I Disney live action movies and it gives me fucking move on. Give your head a shake, Google. That's not live action. Thank you. Oh, here we go. Best Disney live action movies. A list. Number one, Kim Possible, which is a cartoon. That's also animated. These are just cartoons. We're on the, we're on the same website. I, okay. I, I don't think these people know. Yeah, well, you know what? Just, just for the Alice fact that we have Wonderland haven't... is terrible. Oh, the one with Johnny Depp? That's terrible. Yeah, I assume that's bad. Um, no, remember the, remember the Titans is just a really solid movie. Um, Good Denzel. Great Denzel performance. Uh, yeah, I mean it, it. It has emotional, emotionally poignant moments that it feels like it earns. The football scenes are good, aside from one time when PD picks off a pass in a montage and runs in the direction the receiver was already running. I believe his name is Turk Turkleton. <laughs> Turk Turkleton. That's what Kelso calls him on Scrubs. <laughs> Your last name's not Turkleton. You think my name is Turk Turkleton? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you got some Turk in there. Who doesn't love He's Turk? He's got to have a lot of money, you got right? Sunshine. Sunshine. It's great. I mean, the way they they it's deal got with young course, Gosling. Very important sort of social issues with with uh, segregation and racial animus. I think they do a great job sort of dealing with that issue openly and honestly. Uh, I, I and of course Denzel's an amazing actor. Like I was saying, every part of it is great. Like I just I love I love the movie. Absolutely love it. Good soundtrack. Yeah, too. I was to say soundtrack is underrated really good. soundtrack yeah, for, sure. for that movie. Yeah, for sure. Very uh, like I mean, the first time you see it, you don't see like the main character becoming paralyzed. Like that's a an interesting curve that was not anticipated. Spoiler. Well, that... I think I think. Yeah. Okay. I'm spo- for spoiling anyone, a seventeen year old movie. But for anyone who watches movies, you kind of got the sense it's there. Always has to be some sort of like they've overcome racism. Sure. Yes. But there still has to be some sort of other driving force yeah. in the movie. Like, sure, but th- you don't see that particular thing coming the first time. At least I don't. I get. I guess. I guess it's true. In retrospect, when you watch it now, the that particular scene that precedes him getting in the car accident is a little heavy-handed, with just how like he's almost waving goodbye to a crowd of people as if he's never. Bye. Yeah. Now here's the part that I like to think about: Is this a prequel to The Wire? Okay. And Avon Barksdale actually made him paralyzed. So you're saying it. that Wood Harris secretly paralyzed Brateer. Okay. And it was all just getting into the game. It was all the game. Maybe. 
Wood Harris, sneaky, like, in good stuff. You know what? It, speaking of guys who just pop up in sports movies all the time, uh, he's also in Above the Rim. Is he? He's, um, he's Tupac's, like, main henchman. Oh. In Above the Rim. He's all very threatening. He's also a slam poetry artist in Southland Tales who tries to commit a double murder, a fake one, but then gets killed himself. I feel like he probably tries to kill someone in at least 60% of his movies. He didn't kill anyone in this movie. Well, you're Well, you're my theory that if he's actually Avon Barksdale, then, you know, we've, we're dealing with something on a different level here. Possibly. Possibly. I didn't like the little girl. No, and she almost became something. That, that, and that, then... that, that, that feels like the most Disney part of that Movie well, she me. was she she went from that to being in a bunch of like Disney Channel original movies to now she's in Nashville, I think. Oh, on CMT. Yeah, I think it was originally on. CMT. Does, does country on. music television still show country music? No, none of these channels show music. Yeah, I blew my mind that MTV doesn't show music anymore. We yeah, he, learned that like last week. He did. He learned it last week that MTV doesn't show. When was the last time they showed music? Was Fifteen years ago. I mean, even 15 years ago, MTV was still more known for probably, like, you know, just the MTV original series. Yeah. Less about the music video. Like, they haven't been music video dependent in probably 25 years. Tim, that, that Tim, found, that, Tim, Tim found that out last like, week. Even, even, he was stunned when he turned on MTV and Dire Straits wasn't playing. Well, again, like, music videos even just I want my as, TV. Yeah. I want my MTV. But music videos even <laughs> as, like... A medium haven't really been important in a long time. Like Glover came out with uh, "This Is America" this weekend, and people were like, "Wow, this is the most important music video we've had in seven years." Because th- it may people be the fir- still made music videos. Yeah, people make music videos. <laughs> Guess so. All right, number one. Any given Sunday, Tim, would you like to do? Can you Google the speech, please, <laughs> and try to perform it for us in an Al Pacino voice? You're gonna have to give me a moment. Well, just type in any given Sunday speech text. Yeah, but that, that darn speech. <laughs> there are so many different... Let's try to rank the characters okay. here. Who is the best character in any given Sunday? Willie Beeman. I think it's Willie Beeman, too. It has. It's, it's, or it's James the, Woods. It's the chalk. Ooh. James Woods is great in this. And Tim loves James Woods. You know he does. Oh. James Woods great. I, I actually don't think Cameron Diaz is the hero of this movie. You don't think she is, or you do, I do think? I, I do think she is. She's actually the secret hero of this movie. Tim always sides with management. <laughs> I've noticed. It's not. He, and, was, he and, was also cheering for the woman who owned the Indians in Major League. <laughs> he's trying to make a professional football team profitable, and unlike the team that's currently in Miami in the real world, this yeah. team has a chance of being profitable. Jim Brown's good in this. Yeah, Jim Brown is excellent. I'm, sh- I'm shocked he remembered all of his lines. I think that's why he wears sunglasses, so we can, like, read off cue cards. <laughs> just constantly <laughs> back and forth. Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, T.O.? T.O., is it good in this movie? I mean, is is, 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 is Pacino good in this movie? No. Or, or do we just accept that it's Pacino going full Pacino and we're, we're here We're good it. with that. Okay. That cool. is exact, because afterwards he tries to go full Pacino again. And it never really works after this. Speaking of scrubs, no, Dr. True. Cox is very good in this movie. Yeah, Dr. Cox is good in this movie, yeah. Playing the Jim Rome-esque figure. Yep. He even gets pushed. Yep. Matthew Modine as the good doctor. Oh, yeah. yeah Isn't, he uh... Is oh, who's, uh, who's the guy who ends up being... Aaron Eckert. Isn't Aaron Eckert in this movie? Yeah, he's yes, the offensive he coach. He's, uh... The offensive uh, coordinator, isn't he? What's his name, though? Crozier. Crozier, right. The offensive coordinator. Dennis Quaid is good in this movie. Yeah, he's fine. As a decrepit really, game tough because he does so many scenes with Willie Beeman. So he's always... It's like it's like an SNL cast member in 82 who only ever got to appear on screen. With Eddie Murphy? With Eddie Murphy. Like, it's not your fault that you're not doing a good job. You're just kind of being overshadowed. Take that, Joe Piscopo. There you go. Charlton Heston's in this movie, too. He's the commissioner! He is in this movie! He's the oh, commissioner! Yeah. Isn't he? Yes, he is. He's dead. I, I mean, the movie is just... It's top notch. I don't care what anybody says. It's top notch. Oh yeah, put it this way. I mean, it's not a good movie. I find I will completely. It, it, the directorial it does every... style is jarring sometimes. Of course it least. is. It's Oliver Stone. I know. It, um, it's a great movie without being a good movie, if you know what I mean. But would you say it's also Elizabeth a movie Berkley as the hooker that came out in the late '90s that really tried to make its football scenes kind of have that like Madden feel, which I think yeah. a lot of people just decided like television networks 
were four or five years later to that, where it's just like, oh yeah, let's just shoot this thing like the video game has it, because that's what or people want. NFL Blitz Field in some in some. Yeah, way. it was probably closer to Blitz. Out. Yeah. Yeah, when you step on people's <laughs> eyes. Yeah. Very ahead of the concussion issue. Yes. <laughs> yes, they were. Yes. LTs in this movie. Have LT to. is excellent. In this LL is good in this movie too. LL is very yeah. good in this movie. Yeah. Although in a in a real life, not quite deep blue sea good. In a real close. life forty yard dash between Jamie Foxx and LL, who do you think wins? I think LL wins. <sighs> Willie beats him at the practice yeah. during the Willie Beeman "My Name Is Willie" montage, which is probably the best part of the movie. Yeah, right? That's a very good part of the movie. Um, great soundtrack in this movie. Yeah, it is fantastic. Everything about the movie is great. I, I love it. Anytime it's on TV, I'll watch it. It's like the last decent Oliver Stone movie, too. Depending on how what's, you feel about W. Sense? Oh, yeah. I actually have better feelings about W than you'd think. I actually think it's not a bad movie. Tim's going to be all about the Putin movie he puts out in two years. No, I, 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 don't, I usually don't like much of what... Uh, Oliver Stone does like some of his movies are just absolutely terrible. Like that Alexander movie was such a flop. Oh my god, I didn't even remember that was him that was so or that bad. was a movie. That was With him. Colin and Farrell and Jolie yeah. getting sick. Oh yeah, Jolie was real, real sick in the movie though. But like, I am a big fan of Born on the Fourth of July, and I love Scarface. So like, there are there are really good, and of course, Platoon is good for what it is. So Pl- I mean, Platoon Platoon's better than Born on the Fourth of July. You guys have had, I swear be. you've had this discussion or some variation of this discussion with Deer Hunter on at least nine episodes. <laughs> yeah, but if I don't bring it up now, then I won't have a chance but, to bring but, it up. But, but Deer Hunter's not in this conversation. conversation. I know, but I'm just saying, this This somehow, I, I'm sure it was going to get to Deer Hunter at it some was. point. I was just going to cut it off. Boron Fourth of July is boring like Deer Hunter is boring. There Nothing yeah, happens. That's, that's just, that, that is where we were going with this. But again, Plat- if I didn't Platoon, bring it up Much now, better Vietnam movie than Deer Hunter. Mike, much better. Just like how Jim would say that Deer Hunter is better than Apocalypse Now, which is outrageous. I think I would, but I really like Apocalypse we, Now. And we, and we got into this during the uh, the boxing movie section about how he loves the movie Ali, which is just one scene we, of we Will Smith just running through the streets too. of Zaire. <laughs> which is potentially still going. It's very possible. <laughs> so bad. You had Raging Bullet number one, though, Tim, I assume, right? Of course. Yeah, it's we, amazing. All, we all had Raging Bullet number one. Um, yeah, so, did you find the speech yet? I, I, I found the speech, but, like, do you really want me to perform it? Yes, really yes of course we do. All right. I don't know what you want, what to say, really. Three minutes till the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Now, either we heal as a team, or we're going to crumble, inch by inch, play by play. Until we're finished. I like black Pacino. <laughs> we're in hell now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here and get the blank kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell one inch at a time. Now, now I can't I do can... it for you. I'm too old. I look around and I see these young faces and I think, I mean, I made every wrong choice a middle-aged man could make. I uh, pissed away all my money. Believe it or not, I chased it off. Anyone who has ever loved me. And lately, I can't even stay in the face. I can't even stay in the face I see in the mirror. Oh, no. You got, you got to continue. Bad, bad Pacino. I know, but you, you, where are we? Uh, oh, yeah. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. That's part of life. But you only learn that's when you start losing stuff. You find out that life is just a game of inches. So is football. The, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow or too fast, and you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. Oh, my God, this thing goes on so much longer. <laughs> Tim, do the last one. <laughs> on this team, we fight for that inch. On this team... We tear ourselves and everyone around us. You sound like a Baptist minister. Yeah, you sound like a Baptist minister or like a really, like the exploitation version of a Black Panther. We claw for our fingernails for that inch because we know what those... The ball team is walking. (laughs) We we know when we add up all those inches, we're going to make the blanket difference between winning and losing, between living and dying. 
I tell you this, whoa, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die, who's willing to give, who's going to give that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that inch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Hoo That's a team, gentlemen. We can either heal now as a team or we die as individuals. That's football, guys. That's all it is. Now, what are you going to do? They win. So now, they win. Dramatic music. Yep. Yep, I will say, and stipulate, I think Garyan's Pacino accent was the best. I, I, I agree. You really did that one a good service. Not a I, I don't do a like great it. Pacino. I was going through Rip, various... No, no, I refuse to believe that. I was going through various renditions of trying to get it right the way like Michael Corleone sounds in my head, and I just couldn't seem to nail it. I will say, I think I think you as an impressionist are better when you have a hook. As soon as you started adding the hooahs, it was, it was getting better. Yeah, well, I mean, that's like... I love that movie too. So I was able that, to. Like, that's actually a bad movie. Set of woman. No, yeah. you that's know the what? start it, it, of Pacino not giving a crap. Yeah, anymore. it's a great Pacino, and it's the same Pacino that we get in any given and, Sunday. Yeah. But it's like parody Pacino. It's every Pacino we've gotten since that movie. Yeah. yeah. Just different levels of his outrageousness and yeah. how he's also yeah. good in The Devil's Advocate too, which is another um, outrageously bad movie. It's no, it's not a bad movie. It is it's a bad movie. It's Although, an outrageously mediocre movie. It has a good-looking Charlize in it though. Mm-hmm. I think that's like the first time we see Charlie's. It may be. And, and I mean, and listen, Keanu Reeves is really good in that movie. Oh, yeah. There, there, if there's one thing that I take seriously, it's Keanu Reeves <laughs> is a lawyer. <laughs> that's his job. He's a lawyer. He wins. Oh, man. All I right. That. See that coming out with Bill and Ted 3? I, I'm pumped. Yeah. I, Do you think Socrates Johnson will make an appearance? Socrates Johnson. I really hope he does. How pumped is Alex Winter? So pumped. That's the first thing I thought about. Like, good How for him. How long has he been? But I think Keanu's a good enough guy where he probably just gave just him did some it money. For Alex. Yeah, or just gave him or some money along the money. way. Yeah, sure. Sure. I'm still convinced Keanu has a portrait in his attic that keeps getting older. Oh, every he's day. very Dorian Gray. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I hear Keanu Reeves is like the nicest guy in Hollywood. As, as have I. I believe it. He seemed like a, like a very chilled California surfer type of guy. He's Canadian, isn't he? Yeah, I know he yeah. is, but he just has that that sensibility to him. Isn't he? He's from the west coast of Canada. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah, from, I think he's from like Winnipeg or something. Ugh. No, I think he's from Vancouver. Think, Vancouver. Vancouver. You sound like you're all the Californians. <laughs> Take the I ninety five up to Vancouver. <laughs> Take the PCH, man. Can I say I don't get that sketch? I never have. I never will. I don't like it. I can't believe it made SNL forty. I, I've never found that sketch to be funny. Well, have you ever met anyone from California? Yeah, I just... All, all they talk about is traffic. I get that. I, I I, just, I don't. It's not, it's, I never liked that sketch. I find it very funny. It boggles my mind every time. The outrageous accents? I don't... The ludicrous situations? I'm okay with the, with, with it going full overboard when they just start staring at <laughs> themselves in the mirror. Like, that's crazy enough to me to be funny, but I, I can't do, I can't do the first 30 to 40 seconds of the bit. Doesn't work for me. hoo <laughs> Better. <laughs> You really have to, there, there's a... It's a guttural thing. Well, I mean, I should be able to do Ooh, a better... No, it doesn't have the... There's, you're missing the crackliness of Pacino for someone who's clearly drank and smoked his entire yeah. life. Yeah. And now you smoke a lot. The drinking you need to catch up on. So you just I start... Don't smoke that. I don't smoke that much. Keanu grew up in a place called Yorkville. Ontario? Yeah. Toronto. Yeah. Oh, so okay. just in Toronto. Sure. So you grew up yeah. in the rich part of part Toronto. Part of the GTA, yes. <laughs> yeah, you grew, up in the, yeah. you grew up in the richest possible that's part of Toronto. That's where Drake's from, so Between the Davenport Road and Young Street. Yeah, that's the very, that's where Pat That's lives. where I live! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I live like five minutes away from your yep. real. So you probably live on the street, same street as that awful Margaret Atwood, who I hate. <laughs> she's my neighbor, and she's the absolute worst. <laughs> blessed, blessed be the condos. Uh wish you would go away. Take your fucking Handmaid's Tale money and beat it, babe. Go oh, to handmaid's LA. Handmaid's Tale beat. What's that? Handmaid's Tale beat. That'd be a real guilty beat. That's when you disappoint God and then beat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll probably do it on the Pat Mayo Experience. I would like to thank Tim and August. Tim and August. That is not for his incredibly football shitty football list, which didn't include Find me on Twitter Blues. at Tim Anderson 87. Darian Thorne, thank you for being here today. No problem. And thank you for bringing the funny. You really bring the funny for the people. Nah. 
Someone else tries too hard to bring the funny. Do you think so? I do. Interesting. I only bring the funny, and if you enjoy me, you could probably find me like on Amazon Fire Stick at the at Commanders in eighty seven too. If you use that for your internet provider. You know it doesn't provide internet, right? I thought it was like the thing you use on the go with like a fire stick or a hotspot. Yeah, that was the same thing. It's like their version of a hotspot, like get on the internet. No, no. Amazon Fire Stick is like Amazon, like their streaming yeah. channel. It's like. Oh, it's, I thought it was like a hotspot. It's, it's a Roku. Yeah, it's like, it's like a Roku player. Yeah. Ah, okay. Then I withdraw that comment. Did you know MTV doesn't show music <laughs> videos anymore? Okay, you know I what? It's that. called music television. I'm sorry if I assume that they still did show, like, at 3 o'clock in the morning. Some That's a seminal part of me growing up, is me watching the new music videos. And I just can't believe that that part is over now. just doesn't seem like something that shapes him. I know. He watched his dad's VHS copies yes. of MTV yes. from 10 years previous. Yeah. He watched it in the store, the window of like a television store as he was taking his mall walk as a young child. Yeah, he told me the other day that he stays out, why he's so up on pop culture. It's because he wants E-Talk Canada every day. Oh, God damn. <laughs> well, that's, that's like a direct conduit to the popular culture. He probably reads People Magazine too. You I might... do in line at the grocery store. You don't even pay for it? No, I It's can't. not a fucking library. Yeah, this is not how capitalism works, Tim. Well, you know, like, whatever. You and my grandma could have excellent pop culture chats. <laughs> That's exactly what she does to consume her pop culture. And, well, then, and then she gets on board with, like, certain celebrities and then has, like, a first-name basis. Sure. Like, her and Morgan have been oh. on a first-name basis for, like, 20 years oh, now. Nice. She feels a certain kinship with Morgan Freeman. I don't know what it is. My grandma loves Morgan Freeman. Soft-spoken man. I could say it. He is. Anyway, they'll do it. And Pat Mayo experience. Leave your best football rankings in the comment section. Give the episode a like. Goes a long way. Spread it around. Get mad. Be as triggered as Tim gets over a lot of these rankings. You just triggered right now, you snowflake. Subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience on the audio version. Subscribe to the DraftKings YouTube channel for you know, videos of the Pat Mayo Experience. I've been doing so many shows, I'm out of my mind. So all I'll say is, I'm Pat Mayo. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Pat Mayo Experience. Experience!